Hi, this is Contractor John, and today we're going to be replacing this old water tank here. A couple of things we want to make sure of when we're going to replace a water tank is the size. The way your pipes come in to the top of the hot water tank, you want to make sure that you get a tank that is close to the same height, and the same diameter, the space that you have allowed as you have in there. Okay? And shutoff valve, we have one here. The saddle valve, go to the humidifier, that's on the other side of the shutoff, so that's okay. There aren't not any dielectric unions being used here, which we're going to install those, and I'll talk about what those are when we do use them. Uh, this flue pipe here, they've got a mix of some old galvanized flue, and they've got some aluminum, which we'll be removing the aluminum because that's not code for that. So uh, as we go along, we'll be mentioning different things and stuff, but right now we've taken a hose, and we've put a hose on the drain down valve, and we're draining the hot water tank out and we're using the bathtub to drain it too. You can go out a window, you can go out a lot of places. Or a floor drain would be great because it's low to the ground. Uh, with the tub using it, we're always going to leave a little bit of water in the hot water tank. While we're down here looking, you can see the gas, the way the gas is piped in with a flex copper line. Really not the best situation that there is. Uh, also, there's no shut-up valve, so we're going to have to be installing a gas shut-up valve in here too. So. One thing you want to do when you're draining this tank, make sure that you shut the water off so you don't drain the whole house down into the tank, okay? And shut the water supply, that's the water supply coming to the tank, shut that off so that you're not bringing the water back into the tank as you're draining. So, all right, we'll check back with you when we get going with this project. All right, we're starting to cut the copper pipes off that water tank. It's just about done draining. And one other thing, when you before you start, you need to turn the thermostat. Well, if you turn the gas off, you're okay. But you need to turn the thermostat all the way down. But make sure you do that and or shut the gas off. So, And then just cut your pipes. Make sure you shut your water shutoffs so you don't get water draining back from the rest of the house into here. And then just go ahead and cut these. And remember, cut them a little bit long right now. Our, the new hot water tank is a little bit taller than this one, but I'm still going to cut these long until we get it over here, and uh, we can cut it exactly where we, we need it once we get the new hot water tank in here. So we'll cut these, and that'll get some air in the tank to it help to drain the tank. One little trick when you're draining a tank before you cut these pipes is to pull the pressure relief valve. It's typically like this. Open it up. When you first do it initially, you hear a little bit of gurgling and stuff. And that will let air in the tank and help the water to flow out into your hose and drain the tank a little bit easier. So, okay? I wanted to show you an easier way to do it. You've got your two stubs and you've got to meet them in the middle. So an easier way is to put your dielectric union, and these are the dielectric unions. And what they do is separate the copper from dissimilar metal in the tank. It's got a rubber gasket, it's got this bushing that separates the, the collar and forms a seal. So you don't have two dis dissimilar metals touching. So you bring your pipe in and we cut the elbow that was off here because it was way back here. So you cut that and then just put a stub up here. It could be longer, whatever. And then just try to start fitting pipes together. It gives you, when you're doing this, it gives you some place to aim. And here we're going to wind up with a we're going to wind up with a coupling piece of pipe and a street L into a 45, and that's going to be lined us up perfect there. All right. So we're going to take this back apart now. We're going to prep the pipes, and you can look at my other video, how to sweat copper pipe, when I talk extensively about how to do this, how to prep it, how to sweat the copper. And uh, so we're going to do that, and then we'll be back. Okay, we've got our pipes soldered, tightened up our dielectric unions, put the exhaust hood on. One thing I want to tell you, when you get this soldered and you go to release your valve, again, do it slowly, and you're putting water in the tank, open your pressure relief valve so that the air in the tank can be flushed up by the water going in. Just watch it, be careful, because as soon as the water level gets up to there, it's going to come flying out of here, so you got to close it real quickly. Uh, got to put an overflow tube on here 
filters down to the floor, six inches off the floor and the pipe. And uh, that's in case this is ever activated, the water can go down and then it can go to a floor drain. So we're going to finish hooking up our flip pipe here. And again, it's just, this is just math, cutting everything, measuring and stuff. And uh, you see we've got two ends that don't, that don't match up here. So we're going to have to work on that. The way that they had the old flu pipe, they didn't have it going the right way. When you when you exit the flue pipe from, think of the flue gases going up here, they go into here. This is supposed to go into here so it doesn't blow by. If you reversed it and the gases were coming like this, it could leak because the force could leak out here. So you always want to have the flue gases going in the direction of the male fitting and the female covering it going over it. So we're going to have to do something here so that we can run the rest of this pipe the correct way. And then put your silver duct tape, your aluminum tape, not regular duct tape because it's not heat sensitive, that'll peel off a lot, but the aluminum tape around these. And then we'll hook up the gas pipe and we'll be ready to fire the tank up. Here we've got the gas pipe all piped in and everything. I want to mention the yellow tape here, the Teflon tape is for gas. You should use the yellow tape. You've got your union coming out of here, so if you ever have to disconnect the tank, you take your union apart, the tank goes, and the rest of the piping with the valve stays on the back side of the union because you're going to shut it off. Then you've got the union here, okay? You've got a drip leg, uh, the gas line coming in, and this is in a flex sign, which I don't like. The to change this, it's a major project at a crawl space, so we're going to do that, but we're just not going to do it today. So you got your gas coming in, it goes across your drip leg, any debris or liquid or condensation goes down the drip leg, and then it doesn't clog and go in your control and clog the orifice or anything. So uh, different lighting instructions for different hot water tanks. This is a Reed 40 gallon. So read the instructions that come with the tank. They're posted on the side of the tank or in the accompanying instructions that come with. Okay, so read those carefully. Follow the instructions to the letter when you're lighting the tank. Don't use duct tape because it'll dry out and flake off and then you'll, you'll lose the protection, okay? So we've got our ring water heater installed. Uh, everything's good, it's lit, burner's on. One thing I wanted to say, when you set this water tank, you're connecting up your pipes. Make sure the water tank is level and, and, and sturdy, that it's not going to rock. Because when you fill it with water, it's going to lean more that way and it's going to put stress on these copper pipes. So you don't want to do that. So make sure your tank is sitting flat, flush, level. We had to shim this one, so you just got to use something solid to shim it with. Not little pieces of wood or something like that. You want something solid. So that's it. This is Contractor John. If you have any comments or questions, please visit my blog at contractorjohn.com and look for my new book called The Dimension Bible for Remodelers and Do-It-Yourselfers coming out this fall. Have a blessed day.